First Kings 1. When King David was very old, he could not keep warm, even when they put covers over him. So his attendants said to him, Let us look for a young virgin to serve the king and take care of him. She can lie beside him so that our Lord the king may keep warm. Then they searched throughout Israel for a beautiful young woman and found a Bishag, a Shunammite, and brought her to the king. The woman was very beautiful. She took care of the king and waited on him, but the king had no sexual relations with her. Now Adonai Zai, whose mother was a Haggith, put himself forward and said, I'll be king. So he got chariots and horses ready with 50 men to run ahead of him. His father had never rebuked him by asking, Why do you behave as you do? He was also very handsome and was born next after Absalom. Adonai Zai conferred with Joab son of Azariah and with Abithar the priest, and they gave him their support. But Zadok the priest, Benaiah son of Zehodiah, Nathan the prophet, Shimei, and Ray, and David's special guard did not join Adonai Zaya. Adonai Zaya then sacrificed the sheep, cattle, and fattened calves at the stone of Azohilai near Anrogel. He invited all his brothers, the king's sons, and all the royal officials of Judah, but did not invite Nathan the prophet, or Benaiah, or the special guard, or his brother Solomon. Then Nathan asked the Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, Have you not heard that Adonaiziah, the son of Haggith, has become king? And our Lord David knows nothing about it. Now then, let me advise you how you can save your own life and the life of your son Solomon. Go into King David and say to him, My lord, the king, did you not swear to me your servant? Surely Solomon, your son, shall be king after me, and he will sit on my throne. Why then has Adonai Zayah become king? While you're still there talking to the king, I will come in and add my word to what you have said. So Bathsheba went to see the aged king in his room, where Bashag the Shunammite was attending him. Bathsheba bowed down, prostrating herself before the king. What is it you want? The king asked. She said to him, My lord, you yourself swore to me, your servant, by the Lord your God, Solomon, your son, shall be king after me, and he will sit on my throne. But now Adonai Zai has become king, and you, my lord the king, do not know about it. He has sacrificed the great numbers of cattle, fattened calves, and sheep, and has invited all the king's son, Abithar the priest, and Joab, the commander of the army. But he has not invited Solomon, your servant. My lord the king, the eyes of all Israel are on you, to learn from you who will sit on the throne of my lord, the king after him. Otherwise, as soon as my lord the king is laid to rest with the ancestors, I and my son Solomon will be treated as criminals. While she was still speaking with the king, Nathan the prophet arrived, and the king was told, Nathan the priest is here. So he went before the king and bowed with his face to the ground. Nathan said, Have you, my lord the king, declared that Adonai Zai shall be king after you, and that he will sit on your throne? Today he has gone down and sacrificed great numbers of cattle, fattened calves, and sheep. He has invited all the king's sons, the commanders of the army, and Abithar the priest. Right now they are eating and drinking with him and saying, Long live king Adonai Zai. But me, your servant, and Zadok the priest, and Benaiah, son of Zeodiah, and your servant Solomon, he did not invite. Is this something my lord the king has done without letting his servant know who should sit on the throne of my lord the king after him? Then King David said, Call him Bathsheba. So she came into the king's presence and stood before him. The king then took an oath, As surely as the Lord lives, who has delivered me out of every trouble. I will surely carry out this very day what I swore to you by the Lord, the God of Israel. Solomon your son shall be king after me, and he will sit on my throne in my place. Then Bathsheba bowed down with her face to the ground, prostrating herself before the king, and said, 
May my Lord King David live forever. King David said, Call in Zeta, the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah son of Zohida. When they came before the king, he said to them, Take your Lord's servant with you, and have Solomon my son mount my own mule, and take him down to Gihon. There have Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him king over Israel. Blow the trumpet and shout, Long live King Solomon. Then you are to go up with him, and he is to come and sit on my throne and reign in my place. I have appointed him ruler over Israel and Judah. Benaiah son of Zeruiah answered the king, Amen. May the Lord, the God of my Lord the king, so declared it. As the Lord was with my Lord the king, so may he be with Solomon to make his throne even greater than the throne of my Lord King David. So Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaiah son of Zeruiah, the Carthites and Palathites, went down and had Solomon mount King David's mule, and they escorted him to Gihon. Zadok the priest took the horn of oil from the sacred tent and anointed Solomon. Then they sounded the trumpet, and all the people shouted, Long live King Solomon. And all the people went up after him, playing pipes and rejoicing greatly, so that the ground shook with the sound. Adonai Zaya, all the guests who were with him heard it as they were finishing their feast. On hearing the sound of a trumpet, Joab asked, What's the meaning of all the noise in the city? Even as he was speaking, Jonathan, son of Abithar, the priest, arrived. Adonai Isaiah said, Come in. A worthy man like you must be bringing good news. Not at all, Jonathan answered. Our Lord King David has made Solomon king. The king had sent with him Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaiah, son of Zeruiah, the Carthites and Palathites, and they have put him on the king's mule. And Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet have anointed him king at Gihon. From there they have gone up cheering, and the city resounds with it. That's the noise you hear. Moreover, Solomon has taken his seat on the royal throne. Also the royal officials have come to congratulate our Lord King David, saying, May your God make Solomon's name more famous than yours, and his throne greater than yours. And the king bowed in worship on his bed, and said, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, who has allowed my eyes to see a successor on my throne today. At this, all Adonai Isaiah's guests rose in alarm and dispersed. But Adonai Isaiah, in fear of his Solomon, went and took hold of the horns of the altar. Then Solomon was told Adonai Isaiah is afraid of King Solomon and is clinging to the horns of the altar. He says, Let King Solomon swear to me today that he will not put his servants to death with a sword. Solomon replied, If he shows himself to be worthy, not a hair of his head will fall to the ground. But if evil is found in him, he will die. Then Solomon sent men, and they brought him down from the altar. And Adonai Zayah came and bowed down to King Solomon. And Solomon said, Go to your home. 1 Kings 2 When the time drew near for David to die, he gave a charge to Solomon his son. I am about to go the way of all the earth, he said. So be strong, act like a man, and observe what the Lord your God requires. Walk in obedience to him, and keep his decrees and commands, his laws and regulations as written in the law of Moses. Do this so that you may prosper in all you do and wherever you go, and that the Lord may keep his promise to me. If your descendants watch how they live, and if they walk faithfully before me with all their heart and soul, you will never fail to have a successor on the throne of Israel. Now you yourself know what Joab son of Zariah did to me, what he did to the two commanders of Israel's armies, Abner son of Anir and Amasa son of Zether. He killed them, shedding their blood in peacetime, as if in battle. And with that blood, he stained the belt around his waist and the sandals on his feet. 
Deal with him according to your wisdom, but do not let his great head go down to the grave in peace. But show kindness to the sons of Barzillai of Gilead, and let them be strong, those who eat at your table. They stood by me when I fled from your brother Absalom. And remember, you have with you Shimei, son of Gera, the Benjamite from Baharim, who called down bitter curses on me the day I went to Mahanim. When he came down to meet me at the Jordan, I swear to him by the Lord, I will not put you to death by the sword. But now do not consider him innocent. You are a man of wisdom. You will know what to do to him. Bring his gray head down to the grave in blood. Then David rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. He had reigned forty years over Israel, seven years in Hebron, and thirty-three in Jerusalem. So Solomon sat on the throne of his father David, and his rule was firmly established. Now Adonai, the son of Haggith, went to Bathsheba, Solomon's mother. Bathsheba asked him, Do you come peacefully? He answered, Yes, peacefully. Then he added, I have something to say to you. You may say it, she replied. As you know, he said, the kingdom was mine. All Israel looked to me as their king, but things changed, and the kingdom has gone to my brother, for it has come to him from the Lord. Now I have one request to make of you. Do not refuse me. You may make it, she said. So he continued, Please ask King Solomon. He will not refuse you to get me a Bishak the Shemites as my wife. Very well, Bathsheba replied, I will speak to the king for you. When Bathsheba went to King Solomon to speak to him for Adonai's eye, the king stood up to meet her, bowed down to her, and sat down on his throne. He had a throne brought for the king's mother, and she sat down at his right hand. I have one request to make of you, she said. Do not refuse me. The king replied, Make it, mother. I will not refuse you. So she said, Let Abishag the Shemanites be given in marriage to your brother Adonai King Solomon answered his mother, Why do you request Abishag the Shemanite for Adonai Zai? You might as well request the kingdom for him after all. He is my older brother. Yes, for him and for Abithar the priest and Zoab son of Azariah. Then King Solomon swore by the Lord, May God deal with me, be it ever so severely, if Adonazai does not pay with his life for this request. And now as surely as the Lord lives, he who has established me securely on the throne of my father David, and has founded a dynasty for me, as he promised, Adonazai shall be put to death today. So King Solomon gave orders to Benaiah, son of Jehoiah, and he struck down Adonai and he died. To Abitha the priest, the king said, Go back to your fields in Anathoth. You deserve to die, but I will not put you to death now, because you carry the ark of the sovereign Lord before my father David, and share all my father's hardships. So Solomon removed Abitha from the priest of the Lord, fulfilling the word the Lord had spoken at Shiloh about the house of Eli. When the news reached the Joah, who had conspired with Adonazai, though not with Absalom, he fled to the tent of the Lord and took hold of the horns of the altar. King Solomon was told that Joab had fled to the tent of the Lord and was beside the altar. Then Solomon ordered Benaiah, son of Zoadiah, Go strike him down. So Benaiah entered the tent of the Lord and said to Joab, The king says, Come out. But he answered, No, I will die here. Benaiah reported to the king, This is how Joab answered me. Then the king commanded Benaiah, Do as he says, strike him down and bury him, and so clear me and my whole family of the guilt of the innocent blood that Joab shed. The Lord will repay him for the blood he shed, because without my father David knowing it, he attacked two men and killed them with the sword. Both of them, Abner, son of Nir, commander of Israel's army, 
and Amasa son of Jether, commander of Judah's army, were better men and more upright than he. May the guilt of their blood rest on the head of Joab and his descendants forever. But on David and his descendants, his house and his throne, may there be the Lord's peace forever. So Benaiah son of Zeodiah went up and struck down Joab and killed him, and he was buried at his home out in the country. The king put Benaiah son of Zeodiah over the army in Joab's position and replaced Abithar with Zadok the priest. Then the king sent for Shimei and said to him, Build yourself a house in Jerusalem and live there, but do not go anywhere else. The day you leave and cross the Kidron Valley, you can be sure you will die. Your blood will be on your own head. She may answer the king, What you say is good. Your servant will do as my lord the king has said. And she may stay in Jerusalem for a long time. But three years later, two of Shimei's ran off to Achish, son of Mecha, king of Gath, and Shimei was tall. Your slaves are in Gath. At this, he settled his donkey and went to Achish at Gath in search of his slaves. So Shimei went away and brought the slaves back from Gath. When Solomon was told that Shimei had gone from Jerusalem to Gath and had returned, the king summoned Shimei and said to him, Did I not make you swear by the Lord and warn you? On the day you leave to go anywhere else, you can be sure you will die. At the time you said to me, What you say is good, I will obey. Why then did you not keep your oath to the Lord and obey the command I gave you? The king also said to Shimei, You know in your heart all the wrong you did to my father David. Now the Lord will repay you for your wrongdoing. But King Solomon will be blessed, and David's throne will remain secure before the Lord forever. And then the king gave the order to Benaiah son of Zerodiah, and he went out and struck Shammai down, and he died. The kingdom was now established in Solomon's hands. Amen.